What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Recruiting 101 show. Whoa, welcome, welcome, welcome. What's the Deacon? The Deacon motivates Recruiting 101. Trying to get it in today, man. We got time to get it in. Um, got a lot of information for you guys. We're going to be going over. So I want to make sure that everybody is. What's going on, everybody? Wow. Welcome to the Recruiting 101 show. Again. Whoa, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome. What's the Deacon? Ain't that funny, man, when you do live podcasts and you do the uh, <laughs> Facebook Live stuff. It, it just does that. So really excited today. Uh, got a lot of information to go over with you guys about camps, uh, camps, clinics, whatever it is. We got a lot to go over. I have a number of different things that um, – I want to talk to you parents about up and coming events. I know guys are seeing um, different uh, guys are seeing different invites coming out. As I had told everyone, you would over the next couple of weeks. Rivals came out with their date. Sandra Hodges, if you get on here, don't beat me up. I will call you as soon as I'm done. Monica Carballo, I will call you as well. But as we get on the show, we're going to get this thing started. A lot of questions. If there's questions out there, please ask as I go through this. Uh, clients, I can tell you right now, we are at four. We only take 25 clients per class. For the 2022 class, we have four slots available with California recruits. 23s, we open. 24s, we're open. And if you're an eighth grader and you're going into high school, you definitely want to be talking to somebody about helping you through this process of recruiting. But with that being said, again, everybody should know that the uh, recruiting timeline is open as far uh, it will be open May 31st. Um, I think you can unofficially go to some spring games if you can get in, uh, if you're a recruit. If you're not a recruit and you're trying to get some schools to notice who you are and you want to go to some spring games, definitely, definitely a time for you to be able to do so. Uh, I will start talking to coaches right now. So let's talk a little bit about unofficial visits real quick. Unofficial visits, uh, again, May 31st, June 1st, start taking those visits, start going. But I can tell you the first week of June, that first weekend of June, and I don't know how many of you guys will be out of school. Uh, there are some some very uh, there's some camps that are coming up, and I will tell you right now, you wanna you're gonna wanna uh, you're gonna wanna start making plans to go to camps. Okay, uh, I know the rivals camp series dates, uh, the schedules have been released. Uh, so there are the camp series and there are the combine series. Let me share with you parents what that means. The combine is free. The camp is invite only. So the combine for a lot of you guys is that's not invite only. The combine gives you an opportunity and I will help rivals right now they do not they are not lying if you go to the combine and you test well you will get invited to the next day uh my client and good friend <laughs> zion hall went to the uh combine i want to say he ran a four four and he was invited to the next day uh, he is now on his way to Cal Poly. He's a Division One AA guy. At that time, he had no offers, nothing happening with him. Uh, he had, may have had Bethel College, NAIA, had some buzz. Uh, but he went to Rivals right before pandemic. East LA College did his thing, was invited back the next day. Had another kid do it with Nike from Bakersfield, Morgan Dutton, ran a 4-4-4-5. Got invited back to Nike the second day. So they are not lying. It happens, but you have to test well. Um, and you got you to gotta go and get it done. So I will say from the time that these kids finish high school football this year, 
uh, if they finish this Friday or next Friday, uh, take a week off. Know that May 22nd is the Combine West Coast. Right now, uh, it hasn't been printed. I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. It's at J. Sarah High School um, is where it will be. J. Sarah, uh, I don't work for them, but it's at J. Sarah. So it'll be at J. Sarah Saturday. And then the invite the 23rd. If you haven't got an invite yet, I think the first batches of those are starting to go out. You should start seeing that stuff uh, come out. And if you're working with somebody, you should be talking to them about uh, getting your, uh, if, they, if they can help you get in, it might be. I'm going to share my screen because I want you guys to see that I'm not just making stuff up. So there we are. Uh, you can find this information, parents, always. Uh, you can find it on Rivals.com. You just go up to the top there as well, and you will go into the camp series. OK, uh, we are going to do a, a segment today. Uh, we are going to go over some of the information that is on some of these websites and what you should be looking for and where your kid is uh, as that athlete going into these camps, because uh, a lot of college coaches use it. So we'll we'll leave rivals open uh, for that as well. OK, so the rivals camp is is definitely there. Next camp, uh, uh, I will take take you to look at, uh, and I need to make sure that I don't, because uh, some of these invites have codes and stuff and I want kids like actually get invite stuff and then turn around and say, but the next camp uh, I want to say is the ESPN. I know a lot of you guys um, had got a hold to 300 and I think it's the UA camp. And I think that is the, yep, Under Armour All-American camp. The dates are here. Here's this camp, and that is at uafootball.us uh, camp series. Um, it is definitely invite only. Don't know who you can talk to about that one. Um, the camp series, high school and middle school. This is All-American game. That camp uh, is... So they have a camp series. They have a, I see Sunday, the 7th. Was that? Yeah. Okay. So that's in Miami. Uh, uh, in, in Miami. Okay. And then May 7th, it just came out for, or May 8th, it came out for uh, California. Uh, I know that it came out. It's just not on their website right now. Hmm. Okay, so uh, high school. Let's see if it comes up for here. No, that is it. So uh, those camps are going on. Uh, that's going to be at Mission VAO High School. It's the Under Armour All American Camp Series. Um, and for my clients, I will be trying to get some of my guys to end in this camp. Uh, so I know a couple people have already asked, and so that will be it. Future 50, I do not know <clears throat> when that'll take place or how they'll do that, but that will be a camp that, you know, others will get involved in. So just want you guys to <laughs> be involved in that stuff. So let me unshare that screen. Okay, so that's going to be, those are going to be, key, those are going to be very uh, key and uh, in the process of you guys getting to camp, uh, picking out camp, those are the only two camps right now, uh, invite only that I do know. There are going to be some college camps. You're going to want to go and look at a lot of the websites. Uh, for some of your schools that are in spring ball right now, they are going to put their camp dates out over the next, I guess, week or so. Uh, I'd like to probably uh, call some schools here in a little while and, and find out. I'll come back with some dates and let you guys know uh, what what dates those camps will be. Yeah, so um, 
that would be cool to get some camp experience. Yes, Marquise, I, I, I tagged you today, make sure, because I want to make sure your guy is going to be available for camp. So parents, tell you right now, uh, some of these camps are going to be, uh, they used to be midweek, um, five o'clock in the evening, red lens, those type of things. I'm not quite sure of what is going on. I'm about to drop a big camp for you guys and what we're doing here in the next couple of seconds. So I want to preference this by saying uh, we are only taking 25 kids on to this camp. Uh, I'd like to make sure people, uh, once we drop the flyer, get on the Zoom so we can go over cost and how this is going to work. But I will tell you, if your kid is going to go to summer school, uh, make sure they go to summer school and they and then they choose the right camps to go to on the weekend if they have to go to summer school. Please do not forfeit summer school to go to a camp because if you don't have the core classes and you don't have what you need, <laughs> you're not going to the school anyway. So let's just make sure that we do that. I know that there's another uh, a number of other camps and I wanna, let me grab these. I talk about these camps, uh, these camps because I believe they are viable uh, camps for student athletes to go to. And uh, there's gonna be one at, I think a ton of people have contacted me about, about these this camp at, uh, at Laverne University, I think you should go. Um, I think, you know, uh, uh, you, you should go, but you have to go with the right mindset and know what you're stepping into as far as um, some, you know, a couple of these other, these camps that are, uh, yeah. And, and you get you're gonna get multiple emails for this camp, which is called Junior Day. It's JuniorDayFootball.com, um, and they have a camp in California, June fifth. Okay, and we're gonna be taking some kids to a camp during the same time and college tour. Now you got to figure out which ones are gonna be worth it. And Marquise, I'm going to give you these as well because I'm going to go over this one because I think a lot of people need to understand a little bit better uh, of what of what age, uh, what age. So I, if you're eighth grader going into high school, I'd say go to camp. Um, if you're eighth grader, you kind of got the size and the strength, I'd say, you know, go to camp. Just don't tell them you're in the eighth grade. Just say you're a ninth grader. It doesn't matter. You just want to get that experience. And I would tell as many eighth graders who want to start going to camp, go to eighth grade, go to camp in the eighth grade. So you understand combine training. We're going to talk about training as well today. And I would tell you, if you can go, uh, go to camp and get some combine training before you go to camp. So you know what type of drills they do when they, when the camp says it's going to be a skill or combine type training. So if you don't know what the shuttle is, you don't you practice before you go because your name is attached to times uh, at with these drills. You don't do the L drill. You don't do this stuff. You don't practice this stuff. You will not. Yeah, he'd be fine. Uh, yeah, that's this is yeah that's the one eighty five Dre and I'm 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 on this one. So this is that one. So I'm going to show you, uh, you know, I'm going to express this to to you in, in, a, in, a, in a, I guess, in a, in the right kind of way. I hope. If I'm going to go to a camp, <clears throat> this Irvine camp, and this is where he's saying, it's at Crean Luther High, Crean Luther High School uh, in Irvine, $185 a session, $285 for both sessions. Not for me and my clients, I will tell my clients, do not pay $185 to go to a camp that has Antelope Valley, Compton College, El Camino, Foothill Junior College, Santa Barbara City, San Bernardino, Pasadena City College. 
those are all schools I can, they're going to take my kid whether I go or not. If I want to Western New Mexico, Redlands, Laverne, Pomona Pitzer, let's just talk about these three schools that are all in the same league and are Division Three. If your if your kid is not a three five AP student, they're not pretty much well. For Redlands and Pomona Pitzer, they're not getting into that school. So, if they are a JC guy, I wouldn't pay to go to a camp for those JC coaches to see them because later on they could just call the school and say, hey, I qualified out of high school. I'm either undersized. I got to go to JC. Uh, when do you start practice? Coach, this is who I am. That JC coach is not going to go, oh, we don't have any more spots. It's a junior college. So that's a lot of money uh, to, to, to go. The Western New Mexico coach, uh, I, I will call for my clients uh, who got it, Tyler Robb, Ian, all these guys got it, and say, coach, Here's the deal. I'm working these kids out this day at, right by there, you know, or, or, or here's the film on these guys. What do you need to see them in person for 185? I'm not doing that. When is, when's your camp? It is, it is money wise for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven junior colleges and four college uh, other uh you know a uh, uh, division two and three and then three division uh three schools that don't give scholarships I, I can't I can't say that I would be doing that camp I'm trying to read I'm just trying to read uh make sure nobody asks me any other questions um so yeah I, I that's just not that's not one that's worth it so I'm gonna go down and look at some of the other ones I would tell most of our people, if you're going to spend some money, get ready to travel uh, because California, as things are opening up, I don't know how open everybody is to what's going on as these camps go. So when I say get ready to travel, maybe to the to uh, up north, to, to, to the Pacific Northwest, uh, to Seattle and Oregon. Um, here's another one at, in Glendale, uh, Arizona, 185. Let's look at the schools, Colorado State Pueblo, Colorado School of Mines, Arizona Christian, Laverne, University of Northern Colorado, Redlands, New Mexico, Ottawa, New Mexico Highlands. So you have a number of Division II schools. You have a number of uh, Division three. You only have one, two, one, two, uh, two junior colleges. It's Arizona, 185. I'll go to one session. Uh, if I'm an NAIA Division II type guy, got good grades D3, looking at a school like Colorado Mines, Colorado School of the Mines, Redlands, that's a camp that I would go to. You know, that that's worth getting in the car, getting a hotel, paying that additional money and going to this camp because Arizona Christian is recruiting SoCal like crazy. School of Mines, if you have great grades, I have a linebacker there, Adrian Moreno. Amazing kid, loves the school, beautiful campus, definitely would go there. Colorado State Pueblo, same, Division II school, great. Uh, Laverne, D3, University of uh, uh, Northern Colorado, Division I AA. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, McCaffrey's the head coach there now, turning that program around. Definitely would go to that camp to see those guys. Uh, New Mexico Highlands, send kids there. Ottawa University is right there in Arizona. And there's your Western New Mexico. It's the, it's the next day. So take that Friday, go visit those schools, stay in Arizona, do the camp Sunday, come back home. That would be a camp that I would do that would be worth the, the money based upon the schools that are going to be there. So um, I would just tell you, you know, that that would be it. Let me look at my questions. Anybody? Yes, I will hit you up. Uh, so that would be, you know, one that 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 I would do is I go down here a little bit. Uh, I did see a Bay Area. That's why I'm looking. So there's a San Jose camp July 20th, later in the summer. No summer school. So good. So now Fresno City, Laney College, Modesto, 
New Mexico Highlands, Redlands, Pomona Pitzer. Uh, I don't know. Eight schools of the eight, uh, three junior colleges. I don't know. You know, they're trying to they're trying to probably get their Northern California recruiting going with that. So that is how I would look at these camps before I, you know, make a boom, you know, really go. Um, if you're not, you know, Salt Lake ain't bad. Uh, if there's a, some more different schools, okay. Adam State, great Division Two. These schools are all in the same uh, RMAC, which is the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Adam State, Colorado State, Pueblo, University of New Mexico Highlands. Not one double A school right there. University of Northern Colorado, Colorado School of Mines. So seems like they, they're working with uh, a lot of the the, the same uh, type schools. Let's see if if anything is different in Texas. So we're gonna go to Texas. It's Memorial Day weekend, May 29th. Angelo State, Murray University, Midwestern State, Austin College. Ben, you know, no JCs at this camp, not one. So these are all D2s. Yep, this is this is literally nine, eleven Division two schools right here. So. Not a bad deal uh, as, a, as, you know, understanding and running a service. Texas schools, probably not big on looking at California high school kids uh, because of the financial aid scholarship, financial aid package. It's going to be easier for an in-state Texas kid to, to be able to go to school there. Not that they wouldn't, but I will tell you, you're talking about a school for a Texas kid in state. That school might be nine thousand dollars for a California kid, twenty. So if I offer a kid six thousand dollars because of academics and they get financial aid, they got a full ride. As opposed to California kid has six thousand plus Pell Grant. He's got thirteen. He still got six thousand dollars worth of money in school to pay for. So just kind of understanding how they do these camps, why they're in these locations, they're trying to grab a certain group of kids from their area, and that's why they're there. So we looked at Buffalo, New York. Here we go. You'll see more East Coast schools, right? Division Three, Alfred State, Buffalo State, Hamilton, St. John Fisher College, St. Lawrence University, uh, you know, Ithaca College, University of Rochester. So more of your East Coast schools, now, if you're a high academic D3 kid, D2 kid, that might be uh, uh, Buffalo, New York might be an area that I would I would I would journey to if I'm looking at going to school on the East Coast and I don't mind. Let's go. Uh, Butte, Mon Montana. I'd like to see what that looks like. Great. Carroll College. Great NAIA school. My buddy's the uh, defensive coordinator there. West Nurse. OK, this might be a good one. It's Montana. June 13th, Butte College, NAIA, D2, D2, uh, Gila River Junior College, uh, uh, La Grande Junior College, Rocky Mountain, NAIA, Montana State Northern, NAIA, Ottawa, NAIA, University of uh, Montana Western, NAIA, and Wentworth, uh, Whitworth Division Three. So not a bad camp uh, to actually go after or go to those those camps to, to check out those uh, those schools in that area, okay? You're looking at Pacific Northwest and looking at schools up in that area. This is a great Division Three high academic camp. If you were gonna go, George Fox University, Linfield University, Pacific Lutheran, Pacific University of Oregon, Pavona Pitzer. If you look at these camps, you see these same schools, these Pitzers and all of those guys, uh, uh, it's uh, it's because of the high academic uh, athletes that they're looking at, and that George Fox and these schools are uh, they they typically recruit the same kid. So you're gonna see Redlands and Puget Sound, Whitworth, Laverne, all of these guys uh, trying to get the same kid, you know, out of these out of these particular places. Wichita, Kansas, same thing. You're gonna see some NAIA's. You're gonna see 
because it is a very big NAIA Division II area. So if you're looking at going to school in Kansas, I would probably go to this camp in Kansas as a California athlete. Let these guys see you from Barton, Benedictine, Bethany, uh, Emporia State is a Division I AA. Friends, Langston University, Mid-American Nazarene, Missouri Valley College, Recruits California, really, really good. So does Sterling and then Missouri Western University, Oklahoma Baptist. So some real good camps. This website, parents, juniordayfootball.com. You can go on, sign on, have any questions, contact me. I will tell you, you know, I will give you my opinion, I, you know, on a yay and nay. If you're a California kid looking to go that way um, and play Division II in AIA, uh, smaller football in that way. Okay. Uh, but great website to uh, look at. Great, great website to, to look at and, uh, you know, kind of go through and, and look at some camps that are out, that are out there. <clears throat> Adrian, absolutely. What what do you think it, it is worth taking a freshman athlete to these uh, combines recruiting freshmen? What advantages do, uh, advantages to the gate by going to these? Would love to start going to these more info on more details. Why is it good starting in ninth grade? Well, absolutely, it's good to go in the ninth grade because everything that we that we do in this industry and these industries of what I have just shown you from. And we're going to go and I'm going to show you if you're still on here uh, with rivals and 24 seven sports is this is a data driven recruiting uh, era that we live in. It is not when I came up, it was about letters. It was about uh, being able to. OK, yeah, it was about letters. It was about uh, getting mail and your high school coach introduced you and did some things. Well, the, the tough part about that in our 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 day that probably about 80. 85% uh, of all this recruiting is done over the internet and getting data in front of these college coaches, college coaches. So, you know, have a, the, these schools have a budget to buy list. So when you go to national preps, when you go and you see EXOs and you see all these companies and every time they have you fill out a waiver and, and a registration form, these companies are then taking that data and putting it into a system and selling it to the colleges. This is why when kid, we tell kids, don't change your number. Please stay with the same email. Why they're asking for your Twitter? Why? Because they want to make sure that they're getting the right information so they can contact kids. The other one is, is that your information, the earlier it gets in, the better it is if you're, you're a student athlete it's getting in the, in the system, people start knowing that kid's name. So when you get to that invite only stage in your career, if you get there, then they know who to invite. They know what school he goes to. That's why it's tough when you're transferring and doing stuff because I watched a kid transfer and I watched mail after mail and letter and all kinds of stuff just come to our high school. And he wasn't even there anymore. So uh, coaches don't know that. I don't know how many times kids are talking to coaches and they go, hey, you're still at this school, right? No, I'm over here. Okay, so you can. And they go right to their notes and they try to mark that down because whatever information they have is, is from, you know, the last coach or – and then coaching is, you know, a revolving door. But the earlier you get in and you can get your name out there and on a list, it's going to be better for the student athlete. Always, 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 always. Um, the, 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 that's going to be – uh, the best way to be able to do that. And from the ninth grade, it just becomes a buildup. If you're a ninth grader, you play freshman football and you've been to camp and you, you went to camp right out of eighth grade. And like I said, and you understand the drills that are going to be done. And a coach comes over and says, Hey, all right. Hey, you guys know, anybody know we're doing a, we're doing an L drill. We're doing a shuttle. We're doing this. That's what's going to help you. Uh, no, no problem, man. Great question. That is going to help you. It is the same with working with a service. There are a lot of parents who just do not understand this process and that it is a process and people are starting earlier and earlier and their kids are getting noticed earlier and earlier or earlier than your kid. And you're jumping in as a junior going into the senior year because you have that, that same old school mindset that, 
oh yeah, when he's a senior, this is gonna be great. Well, these kids been getting recruited since the 10th grade or ninth grade because they did this stuff earlier. So by the time they go to their third or fourth camp, you know, third camp as a junior, they know coaches by name. They know Adam Gorney, or they know, you know, they know who the writers are. They know, they know Greg Biggins. They, hey, Greg, they follow Greg. Greg goes, hey, man, what's up? Let's get an interview going. You're going, well, how did that kid get that interview? How did that kid get that article? Because they've been there. They know these guys. And so some people are late um, to the party, and then they go through seven on seven coaches and other people and you play and then they introduce you and that becomes a way to do it. But the earlier, the better. That's why I think, you know, what I learned from NCSA and any company that I've, I've started and worked with uh, in recruiting, it is the earlier, the better. I mean, I, I got to work with uh, a lot of the guys that I have that are in their second and third year with, with my sons as early as the eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, we started. Boom, boom, boom. What do we need to do? Who do we need to be around? What, where do we go? We, we need to play 707. We got the backlash. Don't do that. Oh, you don't need to do that. All you need to do is this. No, nope, we went 707. Where did I meet Adam Gordon? <clears throat> right? Where did I meet Adam Gordon? Where did I meet Greg Bingham? 707. I didn't meet them through the high school. I, I, I'm probably sure 90% of the high school coaches don't even know who these guys are. They see their names. They're not picking up the phone going, hey, I saw that my student athlete wasn't even ranked. What's going on? Right? You know, so a lot of times that's that's what that's what happens. When you're late to the party, <laughs> and you want to make sure whatever you do, and, and what I what I like to tell people is make sure you are you're managing the right expectation. The reason why I went to that that website. Uh, we talked about this before, is that we do not want to, um, in the in a, after a pandemic year, we do not want to uh, waste time going to camps and clinics, you know, at our dream school. We got to really sit our kids down here at the end of the season in the next couple of weeks, give them a couple of days off and say, hey, which will lead me right into what I want to talk about now is training. We need to train for these camps. For your most part, you're going to run a 40. You're going to do a shuttle. You're going to do an L drill. They're going to bring one-on-ones back. So if you're not working with a trainer, uh, Crump, you're on here. I need your help. Tramel, I need your help. Let's start getting, you know, Jay Finn. If you're a wide receiver, James Finley, modern-day coach, get with James Finley. If you are in the L.A. area, Orange County area, or L.A. area, He'll work with you. Your DB, Anthony Brown. If you're if you're if you're uh, Anthony Brown, if you are, uh, I need some other coach. Your DB, DB Lab, my guy, Coach Vic. Get with these guys. Get yourself prepared for camp. Do not find yourself going to camp just you know because your kids don't know, and then they become the camper that helps with the college coach's bonus, which is, hey. Coach, coach, you making 150. Uh, I need. I just need names and of of, guy, of trainers right now. Running back coach, backer trainer, uh, linebacker trainer. I would say I sent my linebacker Owen uh, Owen from Modern Day Owen Carey. I sent him to uh, Anthony Brown because what those uh, uh, if you Fig AG for DBs in the area. If you have phone numbers, put those guys' numbers in that feed for me, please. Um, Anthony Brown, I have his number. I have to get it for you. Um, but I sent a linebacker with DBs because it's still the same hip turn, uh, hip hip stuff. It's still first step, reach step, open your hips, run. So I, I I I put those guys with I put the linebackers with DBs because they do stuff quick. Also understanding the game that we are in a really really eighty five percent of your colleges are doing air raid your linebackers aren't read react they still read react for tackle but it's read react for uh uh it's still now read react for uh <laughs> you know for for passing okay okay yeah a young day yep for running backs uh i see that aka aj 
uh, Anthony Orange. Absolutely. You got to get your kid trained. And I would say when you know camps are coming in June, some camps are coming in May, they don't have days off, guys. Like, get their bodies ready. Give them this next week off. Get some cryo. Uh, I wish I had some of these ladies on here that would do, uh, you know, do massage and that kind of stuff, deep tissue stuff. Get these kids rubbed out and ready to go. Show these guys can get ready to go to these camps because it's nothing. Your kid needs to look when he's getting the opportunity to work out in front of coaches. This is better than just high school film. The film is going to go with what what with what you see. And sometimes the film is worse, and you go, man, he could play. What was his high school coach doing? So you got to make sure you know you get with with, with coaches, Coach Vic, DB Lab. Uh, again, Coach Turnbull, linebacker coach, Zoo, next camp, May 16th in NorCal. Thank James Johnson. Uh, so you want to you wanna make sure that that's it. AG works out of Jackie Robinson Park, Mondays and Wednesdays. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. 323 three, 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 three. There's a phone number there. You guys should jump on that stuff. Uh, but training should be it. If your son is so lucky to have uh, not have to go to summer school, there it is, man. Make sure that uh, he, he doesn't have to go to summer school. It's all good. Make sure he uh, is training. You know, grab a book and, and, and train. You know, train, train, train. I would tell people, Train, train, train. I know there's going to be some seven-on-seven seven stuff. You can do a little bit of that. That's fine. I pull back a little bit from seven-on-seven seven for my my kid. He's going into a senior year. I don't want him. I want to. I want to uh, really alleviate the risk factor of injury in a seven-on-seven seven game. So we're going to do, you know, school training and more training and then more camps. Um, and the one-on-one -on -one he'll get as a running back will be at camp, and we'll pray to God that he's okay at camp and not. Yeah, yeah, I would be doing. Yeah, I'd be doing pro way, uh, but I would be doing camps um, more than I would be doing any of this other stuff because it's just the, uh, you know, camps and training more than I would be doing a whole lot of seven-on-seven seven, unless it's with his high school program. Um, I, I definitely would say. Say that would be uh, the the message I have for you of, uh, you know, for the for the hour of that. Okay, uh, the other thing. Let me go back. I gotta kind of stay on point. I gotta do that one myself. Unofficial visits as well. If you are a sophomore or a junior, I would tell you right now. Uh, you know, going into your sophomore, your sophomore going to be a junior. Junior going to be a senior. As soon as they open up, man, start taking the unofficials. Uh, right now, on social media parents, I will tell you wholeheartedly, dig in. Yes, I will. Dig in, dig in, dig in to uh, uh, dig in, dig into your Twitter and start following the coaches and the schools that you may want to visit. You do not, you know, I tell people sometimes just show up, but you do not just want to show up. Uh, on a campus during the week if you're not doing anything. Um, and if you can get to a school, if you can get to a school uh, the day before or two days before they have camp to introduce your student athlete to these coaches so when camp comes, they know who that kid is, you're going to be better for that as well. So a lot of our tours this year uh, will start on a Wednesday. We'll do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, camp Saturday, coming home Sunday, because we want to introduce these kids early. So when they get to the camp, all the kids that didn't introduce themselves, who just signed up online, when they get there, they're just campers. This is the kids you met Tuesday, Thursday. This is the kids you met yesterday. Oh, this is the one you said you wanted to see move. Here he is. He's coming up right now. You got to get into that, you know, it's that broker, that sale. Where, where you got somebody selling a guy and it's not going to happen the day of camp. The day of camp, they're watching guys. They don't want to hear you. So if you can get to school, um, telling parents they're going on East Coast trips to schools, 
if you can get there the day before the camp, two days before the camp, visit, have conversation, walk through the coaches' offices, do the whole unofficial thing, it is going to be that much better for you, okay? Um, I think at the camp. Um, if they know you already, cool. If they don't, you know, I, like I said, I, I don't want any of my clients going just to be campers. I don't want you to just be part of that bonus. Uh, hey, we made $30,000 at camp. Here, coach, here's your 2000 Here, you, we did good, man. See you guys after July. Go have, go enjoy your summer. So you want to make sure you're doing <laughs> some uh, upfront work. Twitter, getting in the DM, your junior, they can talk to you. Uh, right? Who should you reach out? Uh, I'll tell you the easiest guy to talk to before you get to an unofficial director of recruiting. Uh, if this is a player development guy, get to that guy first, right? So I'll give you guys something that I give. I'm giving this away for free. It's something that I do with all my clients. Um, I'm going to use – I'm wearing a wolf pack again today. People always say, you boy, you be repping a wolf pack. Yeah, I'm repping it. I got a bunch of free gear, so – Right. So if we go to Nevada Arena football, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And I'm going to go into athletics. Easiest thing to do uh, for you guys is to make sure that uh, you do stuff like this. When you go into the roster, this is football. And you go into coaching staff, you look into the staff. So, uh, assistant director of player personnel, definitely, I would I would call somebody like Colton. He'll know. And then Lucas uh, Gunther, he is the director of player personnel. Hey, we're coming up on the unofficial. Um, you know, start following these guys on Twitter. Okay, uh, you follow those guys on Twitter. And then the director of recruiting, it was um, Coach E. Scott. I don't know who they gave that to yet, if they gave it to anybody. Um, who I would not talk to is the head coach, offensive coordinator, unless you already have a, 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 a relationship with that guy. Lucas and, and Colton would be the main two guys. Hey, we're going to be up for the camp. And we're gonna go. We're gonna be there a couple of days early. We like to stop by football office. He goes, "Hey, great! Give me your name. You'll have a badge, or you'll have something waiting for you at the front desk." Especially in COVID time. So June first, when that happens, those would be the guys uh, I would talk to. Okay. They go, my guy, man. They go, my guy, my little cat. He one seventy five. He ain't never been one hundred seventy five pounds. Little sucker. Right. So, uh, so. That I would just go to the website of a of a school, find out who player personnel, find out who uh, hey mother, find out uh, who who those guys are, who the director of recruiting uh, recruiting is, and then kind of go from there. If you gonna if you want you want to do an unofficial and and, and do that, um, I will tell you, I would start literally with a pen and paper with my top five schools that I know I'm going to visit. Um, if you're in California, I will tell you right now, if you're a younger kid, uh, if you're a younger kid that's going into high school, ninth grade, what have you, it's, it's good going to unofficial uh, USC, UCLA, that kind of thing. But if you're a sophomore, junior, you want to stay within schools that, this is why it's so important if you're going to be working with a service to be evaluated on where you are. You do not want to waste time, especially again, 2022 class. You do not want to be wasting time visiting schools that are not going to, that are not in that, that boat of recruiting you. Right. And how do you know that you get evaluated prior to, if I'm a junior right now and I'm not talking to anybody, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just show up, Mom, let's get plane tickets to go to Oregon on unofficial. I mean, they, all right, cool. They're going to let you in. You're going to walk around. They're going to say thank you for coming. You want to spend time at schools that you're going, you're trying to attract to get you 
so you can you can you can make that happen. And a lot of that that's going to happen is having conversations again with services and people who are going to tell you the truth and manage that expectation with you so you don't spend a lot of wasted time visiting schools and places that just aren't going to recruit your kid. And so one of the places, which will lead me to my next segment, uh, let's just do a 24-7 sports breakdown. Let's look at rivals. Let's look at both websites and and, and kind of see where your kid is and what I mean by just an evaluation on where the writers who drive recruiting have your kids at this particular time. So, uh, like, I'm going to pull up 24-7 sports. I'm going to also uh, go back and pull up rivals. I didn't know I, I let it go. Um, and I'm just going to show you kind of what people say, oh, well, stars and rankings. I have student athletes on there that don't have stars and rankings, but they're you can kind of gauge where they are, right? So I'll share the screen with you again. Um, we're going to be, man, we're going to go to, you know, 22. Uh, we could do, oh, I was just so, I'm a 24-7 guy, but all right. So I'll look at recruit search, right? And I can't see for anybody to give me a name of a kid right? Just to see. But you see, I've been on here. I'll look at my kid, right? And he's on here. He doesn't have stars on here, though on 24-7, he's a three-star. Um, and here's one of those things that I'll talk to you guys about data. We've had a, we've had a, um, we've had a tough time with COVID and coaches not coming out. My son has four offers now. He's not 5'10", 175. He's 5'11", 202 pounds. So this is why that data is so important, is that if you don't go to rivals, if he hasn't gotten anything, they don't have any idea of what's going on because we haven't had camps. And I hadn't talked to Adam. I'll give him a call or text and say, he still has freshman film on your website. So a lot of times this could be helping with the, the and I'm going to pull up another one too for later. This, is, this could be slowing down some recruiting because if your schools from out of the area, from the, your schools that are out of the area that don't use, that use, it, that use this site to help them with the recruiting, if all the information is wrong, it's wrong. And here again. Bakers, he doesn't even go to that high school anymore. He goes to a whole nother school. So this is a prime example of not having that right data and shooting, shooting some of these guys uh, an email so they know, I mean, so so they know, hey man, you got you got the wrong information there. Okay. I like Kyrie, could you help me or somebody help me with a name of a student athlete that I could I can pull in here? Uh, just so somebody can see, I know Damani Jack. I just want to, uh, well, I'll use this kid. He's from my area. He's going to be the top recruited kid in my area is Jason Oliver Jr. Yep. DB from Bakersfield. Uh, I want to see how much of their stuff he has, right? So J.O., six feet, 160 pounds. He's going to be the top recruit. Uh, in a, he's top recruit in our area in this class. Uh, he does have Boise, Cal, Cal, Colorado, Fresno State. Uh, you get to see San Jose, uh, UNLV, and Utah. He's already got uh, – so these are schools that have offered, uh, and it will show prospect interest or what have you. His recruiting, so you can see down here, as a sophomore, he was not ranked, not ranked, not ranked until December of junior year, going into not having any football, his name start buzzing, and he's ranked in here at 46. So here's a kid that probably is going to take some officials, unofficials, going to be expected to be seen at some camps, probably by some other schools before he makes a commitment, but he's on the radar. So 
I would look at these, you know, that that's going to be a, a kid that, you know, you definitely want to look at. Did somebody give me a name? Oh, that's not a name. They, <laughs> that's somebody's mom. Okay. <laughs> I was I was about to put in I was about to put in that person's name. <laughs> but I was looking for I was looking for a student athlete's name. Okay. So always I'll look at another kid from my area, LeBron Jackson. Uh just to see if LeBron Jackson's in there. There he is, 6'3", wide receiver out of Bakersfield. Boom, he's got one offer. Says Ridgeview. He doesn't go to that school anymore. So information hasn't been hasn't been updated, right? But pretty much has his information there. That's what it looks like on 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 rivals. So we move from rivals. Here's how we we can kind of find out where you are if we were evaluating a student athlete. Go to player rankings. Okay. This is the class of 22, and here we are. We're going to go class of 22, California. Right now, Damani Jackson, Ray League, Ernest Green, and Larry Good Turner. They already know where who these guys are all the way down to probably what we just said. Jason Oliver was 46 over there. Yesterday, he was 49 over here. Uh over here it's a little bit of a different ranking system right so if you load more boom he's 51 over here oh and carry 49 he's gotten the highest you know boom so you start seeing names where you want to try to get into right away to start getting a little bit of your uh getting some buzz is in that top 100, uh, top 100 list of kids. Okay, you kind of want to get in that that top 100. That top 100 will start moving you. You know, Division One AA, One A, depending on your your measurables and that kind of thing. Now, are they solely right? No, they're not. Do they miss a lot of kids? Yes, they do. That's why camp is important and picking the right camps. Um, if you're a measurable guy and you just feel like they miss me, I was hurt, or you know, they dogging me out, this ain't right. I would tell you in a heartbeat, hey, you need to go to you need to pick the right camp, go to it and and go and go from there. You know what I mean? And and, and try to go, you know. Go destroy that camp, <laughs> you know. Uh, just seeing where Ian has moved to over here. Eighty-nine. I didn't see him earlier, but yep. No, he's not eighty-nine. They got it out ninety-one down some spots, right? So that's how you check. Say, okay, we got to move up. That's what we got to do. So these are their systems. When you see them that they're going to be at certain camps, probably want to go to that camp. If you see 24-7 uh, Greg or, or Adam or Blair is going to be at a camp, uh, you definitely want to make sure you're at that camp because this is how your name is going to get put into the, these, these types of uh, systems of, of camps. Okay? So – let me look at the questions or comments if there's any. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, and I, I oh Lamar, okay, I got other names now. So I, I almost put the moms there. Uh, with the moms, there. Darius Carey, who was that Pratt? Where did he? Amari, Amari Pate. Let me see where he's at. Amari. And I'm just gonna pull that up. Just so I can see, but yeah, those are things. That, and Ed said the, the camps are at. Well, sometimes you'll see. Uh, how do we get info on where, when, and where those camps are? So a lot of times you'll see uh, on flyers. You'll see twenty four seven sports. They'll be there. I know they're always at national. I know they were at national prep. I know they were. Uh, so I know they. I know they were there. You guys want a tutorial on using twenty four seven? Uh, 
you know, I'm just go back there for you guys, really. Uh, uh, it's a lot of different things that we do with 24 seven to help you guys as well. And I want you guys to see this because it's really important. So you get a better understanding of recruiting as well. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Ray Leakes, right? So when you look at this, you can also see uh, uh, that he's committed to, to uh, Oklahoma, but you also can see that APB is all purpose backs, right? And this right here will tell you, so parents 24 seven is so good in what they do, the way they do this. You can see when your kid is saying, well, hey, I want to go, I'm going to show you one that has you know, some good numbers. Okay. I want to go to Arizona. And I look at Arizona, and there it is. I look at Arizona, and this is telling you how many running backs are on the roster. Okay. Five on the roster, one commit. In the class of 2022, running backs, usually they only going to get one. They might take one or two, right? Here's guy right here. They've already got this kid, Jay Coleman, 5'9", 205 pounds in the next class. Why is it always my number one question as a, as a recruiter to parents is how many are you taking in this class? Okay, you're taking two. Uh, takes you 20 offers to get two kids. Where is my kid at? This is why. I can't spend a lot of time with Arizona because if I look at Arizona right now as a 22, they're only taking one because look how many kids they took. Look how many running backs they took the year before. They took three. And guess what? In the COVID year, they didn't lose a year. How many backs you think they're going to take in 23? Probably one because these guys are freshmen again next year. When This year when the season starts, he's going to be a freshman. They get their year back, so they're freshmen again. So all of these guys, actually four running backs are freshmen. Four of them, four three-star running backs are all freshmen again because this new class, well, no, that's 22. So they didn't take one in 21 is what you don't see. Thank you. You don't see a 21. The next back, they've already jumped over 21 and took one in 22 because all these guys are getting their year back. So they didn't need one for the 21 class. So they took one in the 22 class already. So they're not taking one in 22 because they've already got them. They've already, they, they won't recruit that guy, right? So you can look at there. That's, that's one way of looking at it. You look at Arizona State. They got all these guys back again. They haven't taken one in 22. So funny thing. So we'll look at that. Let's look at Arizona State. So they didn't take one in 21. They haven't taken one in 22. They got all those guys back. Here are their commits already. They've got four kids committed. Larry, Fonzo, Jalen Marshall, and this kid, uh, Carter Brown, right? These are commits. Another thing you can do, you can go in here and you can look at how many offers they have out. So this is why when we tell you you can offer, they offer these same people who committed elsewhere, but these are offers they have out. Let's look at running backs. When we already know they got three to get their year back. They've offered 25 running backs. Here it is, 25. All these kids have running back offers from, from ASU. They haven't committed anywhere. It's a lot of running backs for one spot. So this is not a, 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 a – when you get with a service, get with somebody that's going to break this stuff down with you. Tell your kid the truth. You may not be Pac-12. You may be a power – you may be a Division I AA guy. You may be, you may be a, 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 a D2 guy. You may – this is why this is so important to be with a service, sit down, go over your recruiting. This is what we do at California Recruits. Never going to tell your kid, oh, yeah, we can get you ASU because I, I got numbers. I got numbers in front of me. I study this every day. This is what we talk about, right? These are running backs, 25. Oh, I'm a wide receiver. Okay, how many wide receivers? We'll get to them. 48. 
48 offers are out for wide receivers. Well, they just took LV Buckley, Johnny Wilson, Chad Johnson Jr. They just got Larry Turner as an athlete. He's going to play safety, may play wide receiver. 48 offers out there. How many spots? Two, three. Let's go back and look. We can go back. We can look at uh, wide receivers. <laughs> well, we would have to go to their roster and look at their wide receivers, how many they have on there, right? But here, Larry's an athlete. We look at athletes. Boom. What do they got? Two commits already in the 22 class. Nothing in 21 because all these guys are coming back. Shari Croswell will probably end up going to NFL. Pierce will be a senior again, senior this year because they get the year back. This is what is going on with high school or college or high school recruiting. You're getting the year back and look how full these teams are. So they skip 21. Why a lot of people are going, well, what's going on with 21? This is why you see these empty spots as freshmen for this year because they didn't go get guys. They skipped the 21 class and went and got other guys. So just want to show you that, you know, that that's what's going on and that's how that's working. Okay. Kind of lost my, lost my way there, huh? <laughs> Right, so we can do a whole lot of, uh, we can look at a lot of that stuff, guys. Uh, we could surely, you know, look at a lot, a lot of it, and I could show you, you know, how that, how that goes, right? So that is how you want to ever, you know, if you see a free recruiting seminar, you see how did this stuff works. Um, you want to really understand recruiting and how to help with your kid and manage this from eighth grade, ninth grade, all the way in, or 10th grade on, 11th grade on, but we got to manage the expectation and, and, and what's going on, okay? Uh, that's it. Filming, I want to talk a little bit about filming during the summer. You definitely want to film, 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 film. Um, you know, as far as any, any workouts, training, or anything that you're going to be doing. Uh, uh, college scholarship numbers, I just kind of showed you that's what we did that. It's down. Anybody that still needs to play to feel like they didn't play, uh, club football is available and going on. We have games this weekend in Bullhead City. Um, if there's any kids, any guys that want to play, uh, uh, we are allowing kids to play. Uh, we have a uh, one team. We're putting guys on that want to play. They'll start next week. They won't be a part of this week, uh, and they can get anywhere from three to four games in where they can get some film um, and we'll go from there. So contact me if you have kids that are like, hey, I need to play. I didn't play. I need film. Uh, they'll get four games in and then we'll go from there. So uh, if there's no questions, I'm going to sign off here, but I'm going to wait for a little while. If there's any questions anybody want, uh, let me know. Let me know. Uh, and I definitely can help you with, you know, really mapping out. I want people to be able to be successful uh, with their kids and, and how and what they're going to do as far as, uh, you know, a, as you go to uh, to these camps and, and you're picking this stuff out so you get the, 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 the right bang for your buck and you get the right, you, you're at the right places. I don't want to see you guys taking your kids somewhere and it was a waste of time. We flew all the way out here. Um, so I want to tell you about that. I do want to tell you about another camp that we are doing. Uh, and it's coming up. Uh, and I'm going to put it out there as a, for a Zoom meeting only for parents who want to do this Texas trip. Um, I, I am doing this. Uh, I am going to be doing this because uh, we... And thank you, Mona. Uh, 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 thank you, Mona. Mona, you, uh, my, your guy, uh, he's good. Juan is good. He's already paid up for camps and everything. So 
whatever we have going, he's going. I know he got sick and what have you, but here is a camp that we're doing. This is our Texas college, uh, our Texas college tour uh, camp and showcase. Uh, it is is going to be June 4th through June 7th. Uh, we're going to be visiting six colleges, two Division One, one Division, three Division One, one Division II, two NAIA schools in Texas. And then the kids are going to go to two, two sessions of these camps. This camp, these camps are $50. So they're going to spend a hundred bucks on camp. Uh, we're putting a package together with the plane tickets and everything. But these are all the schools that are going to be at the Dallas Showcase. And um, you'll see this flyer up with a lot of information next to it. California recruits, uh, recruits along with uh, IE recruits, along with uh, Formula for Speed or Foes Up Foundation. We are all going to this camp. We're taking 25 kids, first come, first serve. USC, Miami, Oklahoma, Ohio State. A lot of these schools, they're going to all be there. Nevada, Washington. Uh, State, Utah, Illinois, Kansas State, Minnesota, uh, UTEP, Rice, who University of Texas El Paso is the school that gave me this and told me about this last night, talking to the coach. Uh, so there's going to be a ton of schools. Sam Houston, a lot of Texas schools, University of Incarnate Word out of San Antonio, Abilene Christian. It is a, a, a tremendous mix of schools, um, Division One, Division II, uh, NAIA schools that we're going to stop by. We're going to leave on a Thursday morning, get there, visit two of these schools, do the camp on Friday, go visit schools, or Saturday, go visit some schools and do the camp again Sunday and leave. And these guys will have been seen by, it looks like something like one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, nine, 12, something like 25 schools plus the visits to those other schools. Right now, this camp looks like it's going to be about six or seven hundred or this showcase tour with the camps included all about seven hundred dollars. That's your plane ticket, hotel, everything. Two camps, six college visits all in one tour, June 4th through the 7th. So uh, look for it. If it's something you want to do, We, like I said, we're going to take the first 25 kids. I get eight. Uh, Daniel will get eight and, and Cordell will get eight. Um, so we are only going to have two vans when we get there. And we want to take any kids that really, really want to go. We like to take class of 22, 23s, and 20, uh, 24s if you are, you know, you play varsity this year or something that you want to do. We're not limited to, you know, who goes, that kind of thing. But we like to take a nice mix of kids that want to go. So something you want to be, uh, something you want to do, look for this flyer. Uh, I know there's some other ones going. We're going to go where there's going to be a good mix of schools. We're not going to take you to Michigan State, Florida, and all that, and that's not going to happen. As you see those NAIA schools, uh, that is Southwestern Assembly of God University. It's an NAIA school. I have a wide receiver there right now. Texas Westland, very good school. Texas A&M Commerce is a Division II school. Uh, so we're going to work with those, work with those uh, schools like that and, and get these guys on tour. Um, the Man Up Foundation, which is my foundation, we're going to uh, help try to sponsor some kids through the foundation. So if you have a company that will write, you know, write a check for, uh, you know, to a foundation and they can do it to a nonprofit, we have that option as well as Nationwide, as well as Foes Up. I just didn't have their uh, logo ready. So be ready. Uh, listen for that camp. We're going to start booking those tickets like Spirit Airlines round trip you know, really 180 bucks. So straight from LAX to Dallas, so it's not a bad deal. So something that you guys want to do, look out for it. It's going to be a very, very good uh, camp. Very, very, very good camp uh, for you to, for you to attend. So uh, Yeah, hey, Marquise, he definitely can play. I have over 25 or – no, I have over four, I have 40 helmets and shoulder pads, uh, so I'm trying to fill a team to play in the spring here in uh, Bullhead. We have 11 teams, so we love to have your son come and play. And he'll get the ball, and he will play. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, so 
give me a call. Give me a call. Dre as well. Ryan Pratt. When does local high school? So high school, from my understanding, Ryan, is that after they finish, they have to sit for 30 days in California as far as their high school is concerned because they have just finished a high school season. Uh, there's some type of rule in California with that, but Vegas didn't get to play at all. So all of their high schools are playing in our spring league in Bullhead City because they did get to play. And no matter how much it's opened up, no matter what it's done, it's uh, that's that's it. So, yeah, it's a good deal. Dre, get with me. Ah, your quarterback, Dre. <laughs> I got you. God dang it. I got your number. What did I do? Here? Shoot. All right, guys. So I, I was waiting for more questions. So if there's no more questions, I'm not going to hold you up. I'm trying to trying to see if anybody have any questions. Definitely go here, guys, if you need to. Uh, contact me and you want to get some information on what you need to do. Here it is. CaliforniaRecruits.com is the website. That is how we uh, get your information and get your stuff out there. I will give you the Fresno State. Hey, EJ, um, they just told me they probably were not going to do a seven-on-seven, seven, but they were trying to get their camp schedule together. I just talked to them two days ago. Uh, but I want to get your quarterback, your guys, out uh, to some other stuff. No, no, that that's just one. We are still doing – uh, camp tour local. We are doing Fresno, Sac State, all the Bay Area schools. We're still doing Cal Poly, UC Davis, UC San Diego. Yes, Dre, we are. Yes, we are. Absolutely. I'm just waiting for these guys, and I just haven't heard really any good news that these guys are going to actually uh, do stuff in California. And when they put that big thing in, in Texas, June 5th and 6th, we usually could find, you know, the, the camps at Redlands. And I don't know uh, if Redlands is going to – or California is allowing them to have all those satellite camps this year. And uh, there had been any dates of any of that stuff, you know, any of that. So, yeah, it says camps and clinics hosted by the Bulldogs. Check back for updates. Click, click the name of the camp for more information. And, you know, I, I was looking for more of the football stuff from Coach Maynard and, and calling those guys uh, and seeing. By now, we would have had them out. The other one was Azusa. The other one was uh, Cal Poly, uh, Cal Lu, where we had those satellite camps. Uh, the other one was... Whittier, where Boise and Washington would come out. And right now, we don't have any information uh, that that any of that is going to actually happen. So that's why this is very, very, uh, you know, it's kind of alarming that we're not, you know, we're not getting that information. And just kind of from what I heard, the restrictions for California are still very high. And People don't want to shut their uh, get their 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 stuff shut down because they just had three hundred kids at a camp, and now so 
that's the that's what we're having. We're having a tough time with that. So I will uh get with you. God bless you. God keep you. EJ, give me a call, man. I'm coming. I'm, coming. I'm going to Bullhead. You need to come up and hang out with me this weekend. Go on, come to come to Laughlin. Let's hang out. I got the first hot dog. <laughs> we lost the bell. I, I, I'm having a problem with this. We lost the bell. John Mirhai lost the bell. I'm upset. Uh, we got to have a meeting. I'm calling the meeting of the minds. Get some folks on the phone. Call Ricky Irvin, crutch. Call my big brother and say, what we got to do? Where's Chad Brown at? Mark Rob. We got to call the old heads. We don't lose the bell, bro. We just, that, that, what's going on? All right. Y'all have a good one.